Will the Chicago Bears defense rebound against the Raiders? We talk about that next on the Unbearable Sports Podcast. I'm going to take the north and never give it back. So that's a good pick. He get the corner. Man, I, I'm confident in our offense, that's for sure. Yeah, she's got some nice Welcome back to the Unbearable Sports Podcast. I'm your host, Brad Baird. Make sure to like and subscribe out there on YouTube. Also rate the show five stars everywhere you get your podcast, especially out there on Apple Podcast. Link down in the description if you don't have it open right now. Rate five stars, and you can be in the running for a free Darnell Wright jersey. When we reach 58 five-star reviews, I will announce the winner live on the show. But today, we are going to be breaking down the Las Vegas Raiders offense versus the Chicago Bears defense. And as we always like to do, break down the predictions at the end of the game. So those out on YouTube land, please let me know down in the description what you think the final score is going to be. Do you think that the Bears are going to pull off a win? So got a jam-packed show for you today. We're going to be breaking down some injuries. Also talk about Phil Snow. What does that addition really mean for this defense? And then, as we always do, preview the entire defensive slate to really give you an idea of what to expect out of this defense. Without further ado, let's start breaking down down the injuries because yesterday I recorded it and sent it out kind of on Thursday morning. So we didn't have the update, uh, the Thursday update. Now this I'm recording at noon (laughs) on a Friday. So chances are that the bears are going to give the final injury report in about two hours when you're probably listening to this. So I wanted to at least just talk about some of the updates that we weren't able to talk about last show, but the big thing Let's just talk about the offense first. Nate Davis still don't expect him to play. Um, And Dan Feeney, though, was limited on Wednesday, did not participate on Thursday. Yes, he has not really gotten any snaps, but he could be someone that the Bears want at center. I'll talk about that a little bit later. And Darnell Wright, to me, is the big one. He was limited with the shoulder injury on Wednesday, but then on Thursday did not participate. And other... Big news from the offensive side of the football is Travis Homer, full participant. So at least have a running back out there because Roshan Johnson did not participate on Thursday. We talked about this last episode where in the in the concussion protocol, you typically see that Thursday game being that limited participant when they come back. And if they are limited, then that Friday is the big determining factor because he did not participate on Thursday. I Highly, highly doubt that he will not be ready for game. So we'll just have to see that. Maybe when it comes out, <laughs> it's all different. But I would, I'm pretty firm that he's probably not going to be playing. But I want to talk a little bit about the offensive side of the ball because I did see out on Twitter that someone tweeted out, I think it might have been Courtney Cronin of ESPN, that what she saw a lot of is Cody Whitehair at left guard and then Lucas Patrick at center, and Tevin Jenkins back at his original position of right guard where he excelled so much last year. Now, what I feel about that, I think that's the best move for the short term, but I think when you ask the question, is it the best move for the long term, that's a different piece because it seems like a very Madden move of the Bears to say, I think that they do have the best offensive lineman out there at that time, I just don't fully agree with it because Nate Davis, when he came back, he didn't look bad and he looked terrible (laughs) against the uh, Packers. But as of recent, he's looked like the solid guard that we saw the Tennessee Titans use. So is Tevin Jenkins going to be a right guard of the future? No, he's going to be a left guard as and that's what it seems like he's going to be unless they really don't like Nate Davis. I think this is a temporary fix. They're trying to just get the best five people out there. I don't love the move, but I kind of, I, I understand what they're trying to do, but I don't like it from the long-term perspective. Also, if Darnell Wright does, is not able to go, we'll see the veteran Avian Collins go in at right tackle, which gets me really nervous, especially when you're talking about Max Crosby on the other side. And Larry Borum has not been playing that great as of recent. So, 
could be a rough day. We definitely need Mercedes Lewis out there as a six offensive lineman just to help Chip. I could see the Bears doing a lot of that for Tyson Bagent. But let's start talking about the defense, shall we? That's the whole purpose of this show. And we got to talk about Phil Snow because we have not talked about him on this show. So if you haven't heard, Phil Snow has been added as a senior defensive assistant. And I think the key word here is defensive assistant. And for those that don't know who he was, he was the uh, Panthers defensive coordinator from 2020 to 2022. When Frank Wright got fired, he was fired as well as part of the regime. Now, overall, the Carolina Panthers had a pretty good defense with him as defensive coordinator. And I see right now that defense does not look the same. So overall, I actually do not mind this hire. I actually think it's pretty good. I don't see a big negative. He's not going to be a defensive coordinator, and it didn't feel like the Bears were necessarily going to add a specific defensive coordinator, especially since Matt Eberflus is the defensive mind. He needs to show, I can put this defense back on schedule, back on track, and what I like about Phil Snow is that he's truly an assistant. For those that haven't heard, the rumor is that the way Phil Snow is going to be used is he just scouts next week. He's not game planning in the room. He could be, but his job is really not to tell Matt Eberflus what to do this week and really kind of create that game plan together. Snow is really looking next week, and he's kind of proactively saying, this is what our next opponent does really well. I'll get the theoretical paperwork together and then put it on Matt Eberflus's desk right after the Vegas Raiders game, right? That is going to be what Phil Snow does. I think that this just overall helps this defense. Do I think it's going to change things? No, not really. I just think that we can put together a better game plan, and hopefully that just makes the defense be a little bit more cohesive and work a little bit better. But I do appreciate Matt Eberflus saying, I need help, I'm going to bring someone in, and someone as experienced as a Phil Snow that is a free agent the talent pool was very small. Were they going to get Leslie Frazier or a Bears legend? Maybe, <laughs> but obviously that was not the case. Overall, don't mind the Phil Snow edition. So wanted to at least touch base on that, but now let's talk about this Vegas offense because there is a lot of pieces that is in motion, so to speak, with this Vegas offense, and really it's all about the quarterback. The big quarterback question is who's going to be the quarterback is it going to be O'Connell the rookie or is it going to be Brian Hoyer the ageless veteran now if we look at the the offense O'Connell to me O'Connell is the bad one <laughs> I think and that's not saying Brian Hoyer is good Brian Hoyer led them to a victory after uh, Jimmy Garoppolo went down versus the New England Patriots and I feel that was more of a He's the veteran. We're going to throw him in because O'Connell is not ready to just kind of take over the reins. Jimmy G is officially out with a back injury. And Aiden O'Connell, to me, he's he's probably going to get the start. We might hear a little bit more upcoming to the game, but a Vegas insider did say that he has full confidence that Aiden O'Connell will be the starter. So I'm going to take that person's opinion than anyone else's. If I was the head coach of the Raiders, I would start Brian Hoyer. Brian Hoyer, to me, is the better quarterback. He's more consistent. Aiden O'Connell, in his one start, though, was sacked seven times versus the Chargers through one interception, threw for 238 yards, ultimately ended up losing, and they only put up 17 points. So even though he had a great preseason, you saw in the regular season, really started to struggle and just overall didn't play well. As a Bears fan, I hope O'Connell is out there. I'd, I'd love to see the battle of the rookies out there. And that's why I kind of want to see that. And also Brian Hoyer, I think, will be better. Also, when Aiden O'Connell was out there, he was specifically targeting Devontae Adams. Kind of the entire game plan was target Adams. If Adams isn't open, hand it off to Jacobs or do a dump off off to Jacobs. It's a very simplified offense. Think Mitch Trubisky and Matt Nagy. First read, if not dump off. Very easy, very simple. Hopefully Phil Snow and this defense can really kind of, hopefully Phil Snow sees that and says, hey, 
I saw what O'Connell was doing. <laughs> we should probably try and protect against that. Hopefully they can scheme up against it. So th- I just want to call that out. Also, Jacoby Myers is no slouch at the wide receiver position. For those that care, he's on my fantasy team and he's been doing pretty well because Devontae Adams has been a little bit nicked up. So that's definitely something to see. Is he going to be 100%? Is he going to be 80%? What percent of Devontae Adams will be out there for the Raiders? The last little bit that I do want to talk about on this Raiders offense, just to give you a preview of it, is this offensive line is really not that bad. It really is like throwing away what you knew about the Raiders, where I said the defense is not terrible. (laughs) The defense is okay, right? Or it's slightly poor. This offense is bad. This offense has not done well, but it's not because of the offensive line. It always seems like they have a bad offensive line, but this year you're talking about Dylan Parham. Obviously, they have Colton Miller at left tackle. Dylan Parham, the Memphis uh, center that a lot of people wanted the Bears to have, is playing left guard and having a pretty decent season so far. Nothing outrageous. Then uh, Andre James is having a good season at center, but really kind of an okay center. And then Von Rotten at the right guard position is also having a pretty good season. But really where to target is Jermaine Illuminor. He's had, he had a really good season last year, but this year kind of regressing back to what he normally is. Not a great right tackle. And when you look at this offensive line, He's the biggest weak spot on this offensive line um, overall. So definitely where we can get pressure is at that right tackle position. Um, Another key piece that I just want to call out too, Michael Mayer, the tight end from Notre Dame, is having a good season from receiving the football. And rightfully so, as a tight end, you can't expect too much. He has struggled adjusting his blocking game to the next level. But as a receiver, Don't sleep on him. He still can get a handful of catches and get some decent yards in the middle of the field if the Bears kind of allow that for Aiden O'Connell. Now, let's flip over to the Chicago Bears, shall we? Because I want to start previewing a little bit about the Bears defense. Because I think that the big question is going to be about this secondary. Because you talk about Devontae Adams. Uh, Then they also have Jacoby Myers. Said it before, Mayer is not a terrible tight end, just kind of the epitome of rookie tight end. Ignore what you know about Sam Laporta. Mayer is playing like a typical rookie tight end should. Also, Hunter Renfro is still there in the slot. He has not played like Hunter Renfro since um, the new head coach and play caller for the Vegas Raiders, but still pretty good wide receivers, and I'm hoping that the Bears secondary can really kind of take you kind of move up and play better against Devontae Adams. Jalen Johnson is kind of also known for playing his best ball against Devontae Adams. So I really hope that they allow Jalen Johnson to shadow Devontae Adams. Maybe not when he gets into the slot, but I remember the Bears doing that when he was at Green Bay and it worked phenomenally well. So I like Jalen Johnson sticking on to Devontae Adams and that's something that I would do. Now, Jacoby Myers... Put Stevenson on it, and I know that we don't float the corners around too much, but I think that that could be a good option for us overall because Johnson does have that dog and wants to take on Devontae Adams. Why not give the veteran an opportunity to go against one of the best wide receivers, especially if he knows his tendencies? For those that I I love playing pickup basketball, and I know some of my friends They know what I'm going to do in the post. They know how I'm going to attack the rim. They understand it because they play against me all the time. Same thing with Jalen Johnson and and Devontae Adams. I think it would be very smart of Matt Eberflus to keep Jalen Johnson on him because it really does seem he knows if he's going left. He knows if he's going right. And I also, as a fan of the game, just want to watch that matchup. But also in the slot, Kyler Gordon, obviously back from injury, want to see what he does against Hunter Renfro. And really overall, these cornerbacks is really what I want to see. Um, I really want to see them play well. The other piece too, because I know there's the injuries. We talked a little bit about that. I did not talk about the defensive injuries for the Chicago Bears. And on the defensive side of the ball, Terrell Smith is not going to be there because of mono and could be out a total of four weeks. We'll just have to see. It might be three weeks. Yannick Ngakwe was a full participant today, 
or on Thursday, so he should be back uh, or he should be healthy. I know some people were curious because of his back injury. And um, Eddie Jackson did not participate on Thursday. I'm curious if this is more of a veteran um, veteran rest day because of his foot. We saw him play a little bit last game, but I really want him to be fully healthy because when he's out there, Jaquan Brisker plays better. And Jaquan Brisker right now, he's been very good in run coverage. I mean, in run defense, but when I see him in coverage, he just seems a little bit lost out there. Seems like he needs a veteran presence just to kind of get him in the right position. And that's what I think that Eddie Jackson can really do. They seem to be a dynamic duo. Hopefully Eddie Jackson can be out there because that obviously help doesn't even just help the defense. It also helps raise the performance of a Jaquan Brisker. So hopefully he's a, a more of a full go and can be out there more consistently. But I do think that this secondary will be tested. It's definitely going to be something to watch out for. But let's flip over to the next topic and kind of my last topic before we start talking about the X factors. And that's pressure. Ladies and gentlemen, we need pressure. We saw we talked about this. Aiden McConnell got sacked Aiden O'Connell got sacked seven times against the Chargers. Yes, the Chargers have Bosa. Bosa hasn't looked the same. They do have a man named Khalil Mack, but he hasn't looked the same. He's actually looked a little bit better than last year. But really, for the Chicago Bears, we need to get pressure on Illuminar. That's why I'm looking at it to Marcus Walker. He needs to kind of get that pressure on that right side. If you just simply look at the offensive line, you see the weak spot. The right side. You have to attack that right side. I think in the middle, our defensive tackles are probably not going to get a lot of push. Even though that Javon Dexter should be getting more snaps, he hasn't been. And I want to call this out too because this is a little frustrating. On Javon Dexter's birthday, which was two weeks ago, he had a total of 33 snaps. Then last week against the Minnesota Vikings, he only had 16 snaps. Why are you giving him less snaps than before? He played better two weeks ago, right? So to me, give Javon Dexter more snaps. Give him more playing time. I don't think that the Bears are going to absolutely dominate up the middle, but why not just put the better player out there? It's as simple as that. So next, I do want to talk about when we're talking about getting pressure, I also want to look at Yannick Ngakwe, who has who was a former Raider and left on some poor terms. I really can expect him to get a sack. I think he's going to be coming out with a vengeance, trying to get a sack. I'm almost guaranteed. I'm going to guarantee Yannick Ngakwe gets a sack this week because I know he's going to be running out there with his hair on fire. But really, I think it's going to be up to, I think Ngakwe is going to get pressure, but I'm really looking at Demarcus Walker on that right side, attacking the right tackle. That's where I think that the Bears need to win. That's where I think that they can be successful. And I'm not calling out Dominique Robinson because he's done absolutely nothing this season. So so we need somebody who's at least done something. Or Rasheem Green, right? Kind of forget that he's on the team. He has not done anything either. But guys, we got to attack that right side. Maybe confuse as well with some of the blitzes. The blitz, we've been calling a little bit more blitzes. Let's maybe notch those up. If O'Connell is going to be out there, which all signs point to, he's probably going to be out there. So that's kind of how I would attack this rookie, throw him off, throw some confusing blitzes, attack the right side, and really kind of get in the face of this rookie quarterback, assuming O'Connell is going to be starting. So now, the X Factor. People watching out there on YouTube, let me know your X Factors down below. So the X Factor, somebody... Not just the best player out there on the Bears defense, but who is going to be this X factor that I think has to have a good game in order to kind of kick it up a notch and really take over this entire game. Now, even though I've been pressuring Demarcus Walker that it's got to be Walker, it's got to, Walker's got to push, Walker's got to push, I think realistically, I can't see Walker absolutely dominating. And I hope I end up regretting these words. And I hope that Demarcus Walker gets two sacks and absolutely takes over. But I do believe that the X factor of this game is going to be Jalen Johnson. Because you're talking about two good outside wide receivers. And Johnson does have the potential to be an absolute lockdown. Yes, 
It would be great if Stevenson could lock down his guy, but I got to go with Jalen Johnson because he can truly take over the game and just truly lock down one side of the field if he's out there healthy and it's getting close to the trade deadline. And I know a lot of the Bears, or there's a lot of rumors that he might be on the on the way out because this is his final year. And honestly, does he really want to be with the Bears? He says yes, but I think it's like realistically, it's got to be hard to be an athlete and say, do I really want to stay with this organization and potentially take less, right? Or is he asking for more? But I think Jalen Johnson is going to be my X factor. He needs a big game um, this weekend, and I think he ultimately does this. So let's talk about game predictions because now this is the big question. What is going to happen with the Chicago Bears this week against the Vegas Raiders? And something that we did not or we have not talked about with this offense, this Raiders offense is not good. This Raiders offense from a points perspective, 16 points, then 10 points, then 18 points, then 17 points, then 17 points, then 21 points. So they've only broken 20 points once all season, and that was with Brian Hoyer at quarterback. And my guess still is that Aiden O'Connell is going to be the quarterback for the Raiders. The Raiders offense is also ranked 30th according to DVOA, so really not a good offense by any way that you slice it. I think that this is going to be a little bit of a snore fest. We, we're talking about most likely two rookie quarterbacks going at it and one undrafted, obviously, with, uh, with Tyson Bajant. I think ultimately this is going to be a weird game, and I think the final score, I'm going to say it's going to be 13-16 to 16 Bears end up losing. Um, I think that I just don't see the Bears putting all the all the pieces together, and I think even if the Raiders have O'Connell out there, if O'Connell starts to struggle, I could see them saying, "You know what, Hoyer, you're in. Do what you can and come in in the second half and do something." But I think overall, when you have these young quarterbacks, inexperienced backups playing, and the Bears not really having a a true running back that's going to be out there, it, Foreman's good. But we saw some struggles last week, and I talked about it last episode. I don't think that there's going to be a lot of movement. I don't think that it's going to be a high-scoring affair, ultimately 13-16. But for those that are out there on YouTube, let me know down below what you believe. And I guess my bold take, because I always like to do a bold take, Ngakwe getting a sack. I don't think it's that bold, but I do believe, or you know what, just to make it bold, I'll kick it up to two sacks, because I do think that he's going to... He's going to come out, and you see this with football players and just people in general. They want to show, hey, you got rid of me. This is what you got rid of. I'm I'm pretty darn good. And speaking of pretty darn good, we got to do our coin flip. And for those that are new to the show, this coin flip is 5-1 and on the season. It's the best predictor. It's just the coin flip app, default one from the iPhone store. And so heads means bears win. Tails means that the Raiders will win. Let's just do a little flip and see what happens. Let's see. Tails. So that means Bears lose. That's what the coin flip is saying. It is predicting Bears lose. So we shall see. Coin flip, 5-1 and on the season. It says that it's 50-50, but man, that's pretty darn accurate. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for listening to this show. Thank you so much. Make sure to like and subscribe out there on YouTube. YouTube. Also rate the show five stars everywhere that you get your podcast. And with that unbearable sports podcast, we are out. Yeah, she's got some nice long hair and